Hello, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to episode 37 of my Logic Pro 10 video tutorial series. This episode will be the first of a series of videos where we'll cover all of the, or most of the, uh, MIDI effects plugins that are new to Logic 10. In this episode, we'll cover the Arpeggiator plugin. Prior to Logic 10, you'd actually have to go into the MIDI environment, which is essentially just a a virtual MIDI studio. So this was much more difficult to do in Logic 9 and prior because you'd have to have some familiarity with the MIDI environment. You had to go through all the routing. Um, so it was just, it was more difficult to do. And we didn't have this nice MIDI effects insert uh, right on the channel strip like we do in Logic 10 now. Uh, and this uh, MIDI effects insert will show up on any software instrument track that you create. So to get started, let's add our arpeggiator plugin to our MIDI effects insert here. It appears just below the EQ display and just above where the uh, software instruments go. So there's our arpeggiator. We'll add that in. And then this is the arpeggiator's plugin window. By the way, the instrument I'm using right now is just the ES2. It's just a preset in the ES2. It's pretty basic. It sounds like this. Um, what an arpeggiator does is it takes uh, played chords, so like a C major chord like this, and creates arpeggios out of the chord. Or, or maybe something like this. I'm really oversimplifying it there, but that's essentially what the arpeggiator does, and you can do it with much more complex, wider chords. You don't have to do it with just three note chords. Um, so I'm gonna go through I'm going to show you how to use the arpeggiator. I'm going to go through most of the features uh, in the arpeggiator plugin, not all of them, but most of the important ones I'll, I'll hit on. All right, so the very first thing to uh, cover in the arpeggiator plugin is the play button. The play button basically means that the arpeggiator is on and is arpeggiating the notes that you're playing. So if you turn it off, you'll be able to play just regular chords. And if you turn it on, it'll arpeggiate them. So you can see that just by turning the play button on and playing a few notes, you can actually make it do something pretty interesting uh, just from the get-go. Uh, but if you're a beginner at this, you might want to try out some of the uh, the presets from up in the preset menu here. And a lot of these are really cool. They can create some really cool kind of complex grooves for you. So you can create some cool, you know, rhythmic sort of... Uh, um, ideas with it pretty quickly without even um, knowing a whole lot about what's going on down here. But I am going to show you, uh, for the most part, what's going on down here too. So I'm going to go back to just the default setting there and make sure that it's turned on. Um, first, let's talk about latch mode over here. Uh, latch mode uh, essentially allows you to play in a chord and let go of the chord and have that chord continue on. Um, if latch mode is turned off, this is what happens when you release a chord. When you let go of the keys, the chord stops. So this can be problematic if you're not using like a sustain pedal or you're not really quick to jump from chord to chord. You know, if I try to play something like this. There's gaps between my chords. So latch mode, if you turn that on, will allow you to play a chord, and the chord will continue to arpeggiate until you play the next chord. So that's, that's what latch mode does. Um, now, there are some other cool features um, for latch mode. There's actually multiple modes within latch mode. Uh, you have reset, transpose, gated transpose, add, add temporarily, and through. Let's start with, let's actually start with transpose, the one that we're on right now. What transpose does is it lets you play a chord and then the next single note you play will actually it'll form a chord above that single note. So if I play a C major chord and then just play the note A, it'll actually form an A major uh, arpeggio for me. So you don't actually have to restate the whole chord. You can just actually just play one note. 
So I'll play a C major chord again. And so I'm just playing one note after I state that initial chord, and every chord I, uh, every uh, note I play, an arpeggiated major chord will be formed above it. Or if I play a, if I uh, play a minor chord instead, so I'll play A minor, and then I'll hit F, and I'll get an F minor chord. So it's just a quick way to be able to jump around without having to uh, restate the whole chord. The problem is you don't always want to have to use all major or all minor chords. I mean, that's kind of limiting yourself there. So what you can do, ins do instead is use the reset function, which basically just resets the whole chord you know, based on whatever next chord you play or whatever next note you play. So if I play a, you know, a minor chord again, I'll play it just a C. It just plays that C and nothing else. And so I have to restate a new chord here. And there you go. The next mode is gated transpose. And what gated transpose does is it transposes the chords like uh, transpose did. So we'll just play our chord here. So the difference between gated transpose and transpose is that gated transpose is, well, it's gated, which means that when you release the chord, the actual, the, the arpeggiation stops. But what you can do is you can uh, state a chord and then the next note you play will be the same quality of chords. So like I said, like I did before with transpose, I can play a C major chord. And if I just play A now, you have to hold A. So it created an A major arpeggio on top of the A that I played. I really don't think uh, gated transpose is quite as useful as transpose. The next mode is add, which lets you add notes one by one to an arpeggio. So I can start with one note and then slowly add uh, notes to the, the, the arpeggio. And you'll see down here on, bot on the bottom, you'll see the number of notes slowly start to increase as I play more and more uh, notes on the keyboard. So if I just start off with, say, a couple low A's down here, I add like a C to it. The next mode is add temporarily, and what it does is it lets you state an initial arpeggio, and then any notes you play after that will only be added temporarily while you're holding the keys. So what you can see is that the very first note or the very first chord is uh, continues to play in arpeggiate. I just actually played one note that time. And any other um, subsequent notes or uh, intervals or chords that you play are added to the arpeggio as long as you hold down those keys. So when I just played it really quick, the notes didn't really stay there. So let me do another example there for you. So I stated a D minor chord. And when I let go of this chord, my fourth, fifth, and sixth notes dropped out. So that's add temporarily. All right, the last mode is through. And the through mode essentially allows you to state an initial chord or note uh, that will be arpeggiated. And then everything that you play after that initial 
uh, chord will not be arpeggiated. So it lets you kind of have an underlying uh, arpeggio, and then you can play like a melody or a bass line or something like that on top of it. So it's kind of like a sostenuto pedal like on piano where you it sustains certain notes but not other notes. This arpeggiates certain notes but not other notes. So let me play just a, just a quick example for you. So we could start with this like initial bass line and everything I play after this won't be arpeggiated. And there you go, those are the latch modes. I really like to use uh, reset and transpose. To me, those are the two most useful. And if you're trying to kind of build a groove, I can see how add would be useful as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and use latch mode for most of the examples in this video. Two other things you can do up, uh, up here, there's a uh, button that says delete last and one that says clear. Uh, delete last deletes the last note that's added to the arpeggio and then clear completely clears out the arpeggio. So if I play in a chord here. So delete last, uh, when you click on that, deletes the rightmost note in the arpeggio that you created. So it'll you'll see it removes the note from the arpeggio display down here. And clear just clears the whole arpeggio. So it basically clears the whole pattern down here. So this middle section controls the note order. Uh, the first knob here is the rate, and then uh, the middle buttons here control the actual direction of the arpeggio. And then there's some options for variation and octave range. So let's start with the, uh, the rate knob here. It's pretty self-explanatory. It controls the speed of the arpeggio, how fast the notes go. So if I lower this down to an eighth note, I'm gonna end up with a pattern that's a bit slower than my original 16th note pattern. So like with many other things that are controlled by MIDI, the arpeggiator will control its playback based on the beat clock, meaning that if I change the tempo up here, uh, the arpeggiator will actually play faster or slower based on the tempo change. So if I increase or decrease the tempo of my project, it will also affect the speed at which the arpeggiator plays. So I'm gonna set this back to a 16th note like I had before. And next, let's talk about these buttons here. These control the direction of the notes in the arpeggio as well as the note order of the notes in the arpeggio. So this first one here is an ascending arpeggio. Turn on the play button first. So bottom to top, this is top to bottom going down. This is up and down, but the top and bottom notes are repeated. This one's called outside in, which means that the top and bottom notes are played, then the second uh, most top and bottom notes are played, and then the third most, is, uh, as long as you have that many notes, that is. And this next one is just random, it just picks a random note. Now this next one is called As Played, and it essentially lets you just play in your own pattern. So let me show you how this works. Uh, first let me just clear out my current pattern, and then turn As Played on. And what I'll be able to do is just kind of key in my own pattern note by note down here in the uh, pattern editor. And uh, what as played really works best with uh, an ad additional feature that's called silent capture down here. And so to uh, show this, you kind of have to uh, unhide it from here and then select it. With silent capture, you can enter in notes 
without affecting uh, without it without the the playback immediately starting. And you'll see that the play button kind of flashes here. It's just waiting for you to press play or click on it. So I can enter in a pattern here, say something like this. Uh, let me get one more. There we go. So there's my, uh, let's do eight notes. There we go. So eight notes. And I've entered them in just uh, by using this mode here. And now when I hit play. One of the cool things about this mode is that it actually remembers the position and intervals of the, the notes that you keyed in. So as long as you have uh, as played selected and you have latch uh, and transpose on, you can actually transpose this pattern up or down the keyboard just by pressing one key. So remember when we use transpose, you just play one note and it transposes the arpeggio up or down. Here we're transposing this entire pattern up and down. So I can hit, basically hit one key now. Uh, an even uh, cooler thing that we can do is we can actually lock um, this pattern in. And if you turn the lock on, what it does is it attempts to um, it attempts to rebuild kind of the groove and the feel of the pattern that you typed in, regardless of what chords you play. Um, so you don't have necessarily have to just play one note like we did before. You can play any chords you want. And it'll actually just take that uh, that rhythmic pattern, the groove, and the, the feel of that pattern that you typed in, and apply it to any chord you play. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a new a new pattern just for this. I'm going to turn silent capture on again, and I'll do something like this. So something like that should work fine, and I'll just make sure that as played is locked. And I'll just play a few other chords and this groove will shift around. So that's a really, really cool feature. Again, it, it just adopts the pattern that I typed in, the groove and the feel of it for any chord I play, um, you know, regardless of the notes I play. Um, okay, I'm gonna go back to this one right here, the up and down, because the next function I wanna show you are, is, are the variations. The variations are basically four distinct variations for each of the, uh, the note order modes here. And they're all they're all different. They're they're all for each each one is different. So there's no point in me going over every single one. Uh, what I will show you is that um, an example of one of these is uh, remember how I said the up and down repeats the top and bottom note. So if I punch in a chord here, it repeats the top and bottom note. The second variation of up and down doesn't repeat the top and bottom note. So that's just one example of a variation for one of the note order modes. And keep in mind, for all six of these note order modes, there's four variations for each of them. Another thing you can control is the octave range of the arpeggio. So this basically just controls uh, how many octaves are played uh, from your original chord that you played in. So if you played in just a three note uh, chord and you set this to two, what will happen is you'll get that three note chord and then you'll also get the three note chord up and an, uh, up an octave, up a second octave. So you can have this go up to uh, four octaves uh, so you don't actually have to play in each octave, you just play in the first octave. I'll put it on the second variation. And I'll try octave range two. So 
So depending on what rate you choose, the variation and the octave range you choose, you can really get some really crazy fast arpeggios that maybe you'd never be able to play uh, in real life. The other thing you can do with octave range is there, if you click on it right here, there's an additional, um, it's actually an additional uh, set of variations that are called inversions. And there are four different inversions for each variation for each note order mode. So between the two sliders, there's a lot of different variations that you can create. Um, and you can get a lot of different, uh, you know, unique uh, note orders uh, between the six buttons and then the two sliders. So let me set the variation back to one and I'll turn the octave range back on and set that to two. So next, let me explain the difference between live mode and grid mode. Live mode is what we've been using so far, and essentially what live mode does is it starts the pattern as soon as you play a key, and also starts the, the synchronization clock as soon as you play a key. So in live mode, the arpeggio is synchronized to the tempo of the project, but it's not necessarily synchronized to the grid lines. Um, so you want to use grid mode when you have MIDI data out in your range area and you want the arpeggiator to uh, trigger and synchronize to your grid lines, your bars and your beats. Um, the good news is that live mode can be used for almost everything, even, uh, even if you're trying to synchronize to the grid, as long as your MIDI data is quantized properly uh, to make sure that the arpeggiator triggers at the correct point. One unique thing you can do with grid mode is you can enter in notes one by one, almost like a step sequencer, and then you can also grab the top of this blue bar here to control the velocity of each note in the pattern. So what I'll do is I'll start the playback and I'll start entering in notes uh, one by one. So you can do things like that where you can build a pattern based on a chord that you punch in with latch mode, um, or you can, you know, it'll follow a MIDI region, any chords in a MIDI region out in the arrange window as long as you uh, press play first. Uh, and you can also add in a chord on a step like I did there on step five, so it plays the whole chord rather than just one note. Uh, the other, uh, one of the other cool things about grid mode is there's actually a whole set of just um, just presets down here that are just patterns from down here that don't affect uh, anything up here. So the difference, again, the difference between these presets and these presets is the presets up here control everything, and these just control the pattern uh, in grid mode. All right, so I'm going to go back to live mode, and I'll show you these last three tabs here. Um, let's go to options. What options does is it allows you to change basically uh, four different things. You can change the note length, the velocity of notes, the swing of notes, and also how many times uh, a, or how many steps there are in the arpeggio, how many steps are in the pattern. So uh, one thing that you can do here that's really useful is you can pull down the note length. So if you want to take something like, let me actually clear this pattern here. I'll type in a new uh, a new one. Do sixteenth notes. There we go. I'll do like a E flat minor chord. There we go. If you pull the note length down, you get more of like a staccato effect, and you pull it up. You get more of like a legato effect. And you can also randomize the length of notes as well. So you can pull up that random knob there. So some notes will be longer and other notes will be shorter. Another thing you can control here is the velocity range of the notes you play. Uh, normally, by default, this is set to as played, which means that each note that you played in the arpeggio, based on its uh, velocity in the arpeggiator here, um, will remain the same. So if I play a loud note, it'll still be loud. If I play a soft note, it'll still be soft. As you roll this to the left, 
velocity will have less of an effect on the volume of the notes. And if you keep going all the way to the left, you can actually fix the velocity to a set velocity. This is usually what I like to do, uh, unless you're trying to do something with like a piano or some acoustic instrument, or maybe you want certain notes to be louder than others to kind of give it some sort of like a interlocking groove or something like that. Um, so that's that's what the velo that's what velocity does. Um, I would actually have to make my pattern have some velocity variation, which it, it really doesn't have much. Let me go ahead and type in a, a new, uh, just a new pattern here. I'll hit one key really hard, one kind of soft, another kind of soft, another one uh, even softer. So I have four very different velocities here. And you can see with velocity up, There's a very noticeable difference in the volume of each of the four notes. And as I pull this down, you'll hear less and less of that. And you can also randomize the, uh, the velocity as well. Another thing you want to be aware of if the velocity knob's not really doing anything for you, um, you want to make sure that the synthesizer you're using is actually set up to react to velocity. In the ES2, I just happen to know that this knob controls uh, basically whether or not velocity means anything. So if this is all the way down, velocity is not taken into consideration. And if I pull it up, velocity is 100% taken into, uh, into consideration when it comes to the volume of the notes. Uh, you can also swing your patterns. If you guys remember from the one of my MIDI um, or one of the quantization videos, uh, you can uh, swing uh, eighth notes or sixteenth notes by a value from basically fifty to a hundred. Fifty meaning no swing, just straight eighths or straight sixteenths. Sixty-six percent meaning a perfect triplet swing, and then everything in between. Um, so that's what the swing does. If I uh, pull this up, you'll start to hear the notes swing more like a triplet feel. And then 66%. So that's what swing does. Uh, another thing you can do is you can change the cycle length. Uh, by default, it's all the way to the right. It says as played. That basically means that every note in the pattern gets played, uh, including the you know the uh, extra notes added from uh, increasing the octave range. As you pull this to the left, you can actually limit the number of steps in the arpeggio. So if I just want five notes in my arpeggio, you put this at five. and you can limit the length of the arpeggio. All right, the next tab is the uh, keyboard controller here. Um, what this is really, there's, there's a few other things you can do here that I'm not gonna show you, but um, the main thing that's really cool about this is you can kind of scale quantize your arpeggio. So you can say, I want all, all notes in my arpeggio to, to just be C minor or E flat major or whatever. And so when you play a chord or just play a note using the, uh, the latch transpose mode, um, it will automatically snap notes to the correct key. So for instance, let's say I want to make everything in, um, let's do D minor, D natural minor. D natural minor, uh, if you're unfamiliar with the scale, is uh, D, E, F, G, A, B flat, C, D. So it's all white keys, and then B is B flat. So any chord I play, so certain chords within the key of D minor will have a flat in them. Um, so this will automatically add that flat so that when I, when I transpose my chord up or down, or my arpeggio up or down, it's automatically going to make Bs B flat. And so I'll have a set of chords that are arpeggiated within the correct key that I want to play in. Um, for this, I'm actually going to clear my pattern uh, and use silent capture to, to kind of uh, create a new pattern. I'm going to use this, um, the play in function here as well. And I'll do like this. I'll do D, I'll just start with D minor. Then 
There we go. So let me go back to the keyboard display and uh, see what this sounds like. Because I'm using Latch Transpose, I can basically just press another key and it'll take this whole pattern and bump it up or bump it down to that key. If I didn't use the keyboard control here to uh, snap the scale to natural minor, to D natural minor, what would happen is this whole pattern would just shift up in parallel and it would sound like it's out of key. But now, now when I play another note, it's actually going to shift it up in the key of D minor. So it's actually going to make sense within my song. So what I'll do is I'll play E. And you can see the notes have shifted up and they've made sure that instead of using B natural, we're using B flat. This time I'll jump up to G. Maybe let's try that with, uh, with something a little simpler. Maybe just a simple ascending arpeggio in a major key. So let me just go back to the keyboard display and choose a new key. Let's choose major for the key and let's choose E major. So I'll just play an E major chord. I don't know if you caught that, but I hit G and what it did was it automatically quantized the scale down to F sharp, the closest note, um, because there is no G in the key of E major. E major is E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, E. So it accounted for these four black keys that are in the key of E major for me so that uh, the chord that was played fits well within the key of E major. So that's another thing it'll do is it'll actually quantize the, the root note of the chord you play. So that's another really cool feature. Um, I, I, if you, I don't know if you were able to hear that, but there were major chords in there, there were minor chords, there were diminished chords in there, uh, and it automatically just quantizes the arpeggio to whatever key you want it to, uh, to quantize to. Now there's also a keyboard split function here um, where you can use part of your keyboard as a control to control the plugin. Um, and the way you use that is you turn on keyboard split and then you click on a remote here and you'll see a series of controls in the arpeggiator that you can turn on and toggle on off um, with your keyboard starting at C1. You can actually drag this slider up here to have more controls. I don't really use this at all, uh, but you know you can do simple things like play, stop, clear your pattern, turn latch on and off, change which, uh, you know, which uh, which note order uh, mode you want to be on? So you know, let's let's try that out. Let's see, A, uh, A through D here are are just our different pattern modes. So we'll try these out real quick. So I'll play something in here. Uh, let me clear it first. I'll play D minor. Oh, we're still snapped to E major. Wow, well, it's okay. So if I hit, what was it? A. That's up. B flat was down. And then this is up and down. This is outside in. So yeah, you can use, uh, you know, it looks like about an octave and a half of your key, or two, almost two, yeah, two octaves of your keyboard to control um, different parameters of the, uh, the arpeggiator. I don't really use this at all, so I'm not really going to bother using it um, much for this video, but... If you want to look up, look that up on your own time, you can. All right. Lastly, 
um, under controller here, you can set up four different MIDI continuous controllers to control uh, each of the knobs under the options tab. So let's say that you want the modulation wheel to control the note length of your arpeggiator. You can do that. So you just say uh, MIDI controller. This is your uh, MIDI CCs, your continuous controllers. And you'd say modulation wheel, which is number one. And you say, I want that to, uh, to control the note length. And so then what you could do is you could go back to this window and as you push your modulation wheel up or down, you'll see the note length uh, knob move up or down. The reason why mine's not working is because I have an input filter turned on right now. So let me just go to project settings MIDI, input filter, and I will turn on my control changes, which will enable my continuous controllers. And now this should work. There we go. So now my mod wheel is controlling the note length. So if I have uh, you know my pattern uh, my pattern up, let me just put this back in chromatic. By the way, chromatic means all twelve notes in the chromatic scale, so it means all basically all of the notes on the keyboard. So if I uh, have my pattern going here. I can now control the note length of each note with my modulation wheel. Uh, another thing you can do with this is you can actually learn other continuous controllers. So let's say I want this fader right here to control um, the note length instead of my modulation wheel. Well, all you do is you click on this top uh, menu here and you say learn. And then you just move that MIDI controller and it'll learn it. So that fader just happens to be CC72. And so now CC72 is controlling note length instead of the modulation wheel. So here's down. Oop, did I clear my pattern? I think I might have cleared my pattern. I sure did. So that's how you can map a MIDI continuous controller to any of the knobs in the options tab. And that pretty much sums up the video. That's just uh, the arpeggiator summed up into one 30 something minute long video. Uh, in the next episode, we'll continue on our discussion of the MIDI effects plugins and we'll talk about the chord trigger plugin. So I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks again for watching.